Hi and welcome to another BuzzFeed Picks What I Read video. Today we're going to be doing one called Which New Book Should You Read Over the Long Weekend? When I am filming this, it is currently a long weekend. It is the Canadian Thanksgiving long weekend. However, this article was published July 2nd, 2020. So it's a very different long weekend and also these books won't be new anymore. A year and a half old by the time I get around to actually reading it so I don't know what we're gonna get today. I guess there's only one way to find out. Also if you're interested in watching the other BuzzFeed quizzes that I've done there's a link to the playlist in the description and probably up there. Anyway that's it. I think we can get into it. Question one. Choose a fandom. Okay. I guess I'm gonna pick Disney because my whole first BuzzFeed quiz was about Disney World and none of these other ones am I into in the same fandom-y kind of way. I, I know a lot of Disney trivia, so Disney's the one I'm picking. Oh, we're not doing auto scroll on this one, cool. Choose a destination. I was recently reading something and it was talking about New Orleans. I remembered how much I have always wanted to go to New Orleans. So at the moment, that is what is in my heart. That's what I'm picking. Choose a TV show. I have watched none of these. So which of the shows that I've never watched, I guess I'd be most interested in watching Haunting of Hill House because I've heard very good things about it and a spooky vibe is what we like here in October. I don't know where you are, but for me in October, spooky vibes all the way. Choose a job, private investigator, lawyer, cult leader, software engineer. So this is just choose a job. Is it the job I want? Is it the best job, which is obviously cult leader? I guess I'll do me a uh, software engineer because that's what I went to school for. And then choose a book, just choose a book. Uh, okay, I've read Hope Was Out before. Have I read it? It was pre-booktube if I did. Murder on the Orient Express, I actually don't know if I've read that either. I've read a couple of Agatha Christie's, but I don't know if I've specifically read that one. And we've always lived in the castle, I think I DNF'd. <laughs> so this is a, a a wild collection of books for me. I'm gonna go ahead and pick Murder on the Orient Express because that's the piece of media that I have consumed. I saw the, the newer film. So I'm gonna pick that one. And also just the premise is great. Choose a nemesis. I mean, if you're gonna pick a nemesis, why not go big and go for a literal demon? Choose your ideal 4th of July plans. I should also mention Canadian. We don't celebrate 4th of July. We celebrate 1st of July for Canada Day. So we got you beat by three whole days. <laughs> Regardless, my ideal plans would be... None of these are watching fireworks or like having a barbecue. There's chilling with friends, but there's not like a, you know, quintessential... 4th of July stuff because I want to do something on a holiday and I guess I guess chilling with friends is the closest one to that there's going dancing but like I don't want to be with strangers chilling with friends okay <laughs> this might be the new curse of bunch seed lists because I have already read the boyfriend project and I did really like it. Oh, if I can cheat, can I cheat? Because this is a series and the second book in this series, I'm actually very excited to read. And you know what? It's my channel. So screw you. That's what I'm doing. The first book is going to be, um, I think it's called the dating playbook, but I want to get two books. So let's do it again. There's no do it again button. So refresh. So this time I'm gonna pick my opposite, I guess. What I don't want. What is the word? Oh, it's sports. It's sports. Sports are dumb. I have like a philosophical and moral problem with sport 
fandoms and uh it, it's just very nationalistic in a bad way i think whatever we don't have time like sports if you want to but i don't sorry liverpool not you specifically a destination i would not want to go it is gonna be gone i yeah a TV show I do not want to watch. It, it's gonna be The Witcher because I, that's been popular for so long and if I haven't watched it by now, I, I'm never gonna watch it. Choose a job. The worst job is line cook. Yeah, line, line cook's still the worst one. And the worst book, I mean, I think it's gonna be the Pisces which is, you know, fish loving. Even if it has the shape of water vibe, I, I can't super get on book with it. And then a nemesis. Who is a, a bad nemesis? I guess Twitter trolls, because that's bad. And also the least fun. The most real and the least fun, other than yourself, Twitter trolls. Choose your war, non-ideal. Non it's the opposite of ideal. No, no deal. Or the July plans. Catching up on work. Yeah, that's the worst one because I'm on vacation. I'm not, I'm not doing work. Okay, pizza girl. I've heard of this, right? This description doesn't really give me the vibe that we're going for here. Like, is this just a contemporary? I'm gonna look it up on Goodreads just to see if it has horrible reviews. 3.37, yeah, that's uh, that's not great. But I did pick the worst day. It's only 200 pages. And I can deal with awfulness for 200 pages. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Two books, a romance and a what is this? Contemporary, I guess. This is a very interesting selection. It was not what I was anticipating, but I'm, I'm not mad at it. I guess I'll check back in with you once I have these books. So we're now ready to get into the vlog portion of this. I have decided to read these books over the American Thanksgiving weekend because I had room in my TBR since I've basically given up on the Goodreads Choice Awards at this point. I figured I'll just read what I want. Technically today is actually only the Wednesday, but you know what, it's close enough and I was gonna wait until tomorrow and then I realized that was stupid. <laughs> read what you want when you want. We'll be reading over Thanksgiving, that's what's important. So I started Pizza Girl last night, which I was very wary of because it had an extremely low rating. But so far so good. There's doesn't seem to be a whole lot to it. It's about this girl. I don't think she has a name yet, but she's pregnant and just talking about her life, how she met her boyfriend. She is a pizza delivery girl and she goes to this woman's house named Jenny and seems to have like an instant fascination with her. I assume exploring that relationship will be the majority of the book, but it's fine. There's nothing weird about the concept or the story. It just feels very slice of life and I don't know where it's gonna go from here. It's pretty short so maybe that's why people don't like it that I can't like delve into as much as they want but so far it's just kind of a nice contemporary. Happy Thanksgiving to all of my American friends. It's the end of the day now and not much festive happened for me other than wearing my hoodie for one of the first times this year which is a joy and a pleasure. I am still reading Pizza Girl. I'm 50% of the way into it and it's still good. I feel like it is sort of starting to drag just because nothing's happening. I know it's only 200 pages but I'm going through it not very quickly so my perception of the pace might be off. I was thinking about how it's basically everything in a book that's not the plot. You know? <laughs> Like it's just character building stuff. There's nothing actually happening. Normally in a book, all of this would be happening around the main plot or conflict or something. But no, she's just living her life, hanging out with her mom and her boyfriend and delivering pizzas. And 
that's the book but I do like it right now we're talking about her relationship with her dad who's passed and it, it it's just interesting I don't know I think probably the reason it has a low rating is the nothing happens vibe of it which usually bothers me too but I think my expectations were low enough that I'm happy with what I've got you shall see me once I have something actually to say though with this book I think that might be kind of doubtful so I finished Pizza Girl and I think I have now figured out why people don't like it it's I have a lot of thoughts about it but I think the main thing is that the main character is very unlikable. She's a very messy character and does a lot of things that are really unforgivable, but I don't think you're meant to root for her. You're just meant to get a glimpse into this person's life. But I think even the bigger thing why this thing has such a low rating is I enjoyed it, but I'm gonna give it three stars just because it's sort of a nothing story. Nothing happens. It's gonna be ultimately pretty forgettable, I think. Sort of the definition of middle of the road, or like, fine. It's just sort of inherently a three star story, and I feel bad about that, but I can't justify giving it any more. So I think maybe the rating reflects that like, this is a fine book, but it's nobody's favorite book. But overall, a good time was had. I'm happy that I read it just to see something so different. And it's short, so that helps my Goodreads goal. So I will pick it. And I've already started in on the dating playbook. <laughs> and I really enjoy it. I'm immediately back into the swing of things. And like, I can see why this book was so highly anticipated for me. The one thing that I will say is, so this is a romance series, each following a group of these friends who met when they were all dating this one boy at the same time and they all crashed the date and went viral because of that and so the three of them are now friends. That scene you only get in the first book and I think that it is sort of important for setting up the series. It does feel like you would be missing something if you just started on this second book. Not a lot but I think it's worth mentioning. It's about Taylor who is a fitness instructor and she is working with Jamar who is trying to get back into the best shape of his life so that he can potentially get into the NFL and it's very cute. She's got rules about not dating clients but they're both clearly very into each other which is always a trope that I enjoy. And I really like the other girls too. Samaya so was the one from the first book and London will be the third book. I assume. <laughs> and I really like London too. I think they're featuring her a lot in this book, whereas Taylor was featured in the first book and now this is her story. So I, I think it's doing a good job of setting up a trilogy. But again, I don't think you get to really understand the relationship between the three of them in this book alone. I think the first book you do sort of have to read. I'm flipping back and forth for it between my Kindle and the audiobook. And I don't love the audiobook narrator. There's nothing wrong with her. It's just, I think I prefer just reading it. So I'm about 75% of the way in. And I was thinking about how one of the things I've discovered in books that I love is the dating hiatus. Someone is on a personally imposed, <laughs> sorry, that's the cat scratching and they have decided for personal reasons that they do not want to date. That is a trope that I really like because then they're like just drawn to this person. But what I don't like, which is happening in this book, is a dating hiatus for dumb reasons. Taylor is a personal trainer and Jamar is her client and she has a rule about not dating clients. Which, yes, in the real world, <laughs> that's a great policy to have. But in a book, it just feels like you're apart for a dumb reason and I have a hard time getting on board with that reason when I know that the couple is going to end up together because it's a romance. It feels like we're just wasting time. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. It's not enough of an issue to detract from my enjoyment of it. It's just something that like I wanted to justify in my own brain. They said it couldn't be done but I did it. I finished the dating playbook and I'm giving it five stars. It's just so completely pleasant. Like it's just a great story to read. It's just such a solid romance and I highly recommend it. I think I did like this one more 
than the previous one. And there's a little note at the end saying London's story is coming in summer 2022. So very excited about that. Though I did check Goodreads and it's not on there yet, but it sounds like it will be happening. There's not a lot to say about this. Oh, we should talk about my dress though, because it has pockets and that's important for you to know. It's very exciting and cute. So if I look distracted, it's because I'm putting my hands in my pockets. Can my Kindle fit in my pocket? It can. Oh, that's very exciting. Anyway, highly recommend. It's sort of sports romance adjacent. There's no like actual sports that happen, but they're both athletes and lots of sports talk is had. I also like this bit from the about the author. Ferris spends most of her time reading, cooking, traveling the world, visiting Walt Disney World, and catching her favorite Broadway shows. So she's me. <laughs> that is me. Maybe more who I aspire to be. There's clearly a reason that I love these books because I am the author and she's in my brain now. So I hope that you enjoyed this BuzzFeed vlog, this very successful vlog. Apparently the BuzzFeed lists aren't doing me dirty. Now I've read five books for BuzzFeed lists and only one of them was two stars. So it makes me excited to do this again in the future. If you are also excited about that, hit subscribe, like, ring the bell, do all of those things, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.